high selling model in the light commercial vehicle segment we want some new business for steering resulting in a higher Hello? growth I don't think industry. we've been and in the medium and heavy commercial segment the increased share of business and higher pack value resulted in our growth being better than industry growth in the farm tractor also we are happy to say that finally we caught up and grew better than the industry because of our capacity in hydraulic power steering which we increased during last year and more penetration in customers on power steering and the higher growth in two wheeler segment was due to the strong growth of friction materials where we have started supplying the high performing two wheelers in terms of market segment 67% of our revenue was from indian oe and international segment contributed about 22% of sales this is broadly what happened in q4 uh, i will now hand over to harish for his specific comments on q4 performance of the group thank you mr ganesh good afternoon everyone uh, as uh, as mr ganesh explained the uh, q4 was a was a good quarter for the entire automotive uh, industry because the, the demand uh, was much higher than what uh, any one of us had uh, expected even though the there were significant increases in raw material prices the operational improvements carried out by the companies and the lower employee costs uh, and the higher volumes helped uh, you know, help our margins the group uh, at a group aggregate performance uh, the total revenue grew by 38% in q4 the revenue from the domestic oe business grew by 46% uh, with strong offtake seen across all vehicle segment the revenue from international customers also grew by 27% supported by strong offtake for occupant safety products and new business for steering products the revenue from the aftermarket segment also grew by 30% the ebitda margin improved by 70 bips on account of lower employee cost and fixed cost reduction uh, however the aggregate tbt loss uh, for the group in q4 was about 46 crores 46.6 crores compared to a loss of 4.5 crores in the q4 of last year this is largely due to the warranty provision for rana nsk that i will talk about shortly coming to rani madras uh, stand alone uh, the revenue increased by 47% the sales to indian oe customers grew by 56% and sales to export international customers grew by 74% uh, due to the commencement of supplies to a new customer for steering products and the sales to aftermarket increased by 30% uh, the ebitda margin declined by 257 bits due to the increase in material cost the light metal casting business india business is seeing good traction with new orders in quarter 4 the business won a new order of about 9 crores per annum from a european customer this is in addition to another 32 crores that was secured in the previous quarter coming to the light metal casting business in the us uh, obviously the covid has communicated in some of the earlier calls has had a significant negative impact in 2021 in the us market and it did not spare lmca as well in addition to loss of sales of existing business a couple of new program launches also got delayed the operational performance of the business has improved with the introduction of pqm practices if this was evident from the significant reduction in expedited freight costs repairs and maintenance costs and consumable and tooling costs and the cost of poor quality the us sales in the current year appears to be coming back strong strongly and we are also launching two new customer programs as mentioned in the past calls the board of rani madras is closely reviewing this business and we will update our outlook on this business after the next meet, board meeting in july coming to rani engine valves the revenue increased 29% supported by robust demand from indian oe customers 
EBITDA margin also increased by 157 bips. Lower employee expense helped offset the material cost increase. The market decline in COVID the impact the impacted the uh, timeline of the turnaround plan. However, we have reduced the break-even sales through operational improvement and cost reduction measures. We are also enhancing the order book position. Coming to Rane break lining, uh, we experienced uh, a 27% increase in total revenue in Q4. The OE business, domestic OE business grew 20% and the aftermarket grew by 29%. Uh, as mentioned with the other companies, the lower employee costs and significant savings in fixed costs help mitigate the increase in raw material prices. Coming to the joint ventures, Rane first, Rane TRW, the revenue grew by 41%. The growth was uh, supported by strong offtake and higher share of business for steering the products in the Indian commercial vehicle segment. The occupant safety products experience higher offtake from international customers and better fixed cost leverage resulted in margin improvement. Coming to Rani NSK, the revenue increased by 43%. This was supported by robust growth in the served models, largely Maruti, and better fixed cost leverage resulted in margin improvement. However, this has been a very difficult year uh, for us due to the continued warranty claims. Uh, in on top of the COVID impact. Warranty costs have been provided based on the technical and statistical estimates of NSK experts and are expected to cover future claims as well. We are reasonably confident that all root causes have been identified and appropriate countermeasures have been put in place. However, the company needs at least another six months of product maturity in the market to ensure that no residual causes exist. At this time, our view is to provide for the worst and work and hope for the best. The second wave and resultant lockdown has definitely caught us by surprise. This has impacted the growth momentum that we were experiencing. We are still hopeful that the demand environment will turn around during quarter two. Schedules from international customers are calibrated based on the chip availability. They prioritize the models differently in various geographies. We are largely seeing sustained demand. There are few products and programs where we are seeing some reduction in schedules, mainly because of the chip shortage. We continue to experience inflationary pressures on material cost. Our teams are working with customers on the price recovery, which will be key to protect our margins. We continue to prioritize the safety of all our employees and continue to focus on cost management to navigate the challenging times. With these remarks, we will now open for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star N1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Sham Sundar Sriram from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. This is Sham from Sundaram. Thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, at the outset, I think uh, we have performed um, uh, relatively um, um, very well at the, uh, the operating level, uh, given all the challenges on the commodity inflation. Um, and, um, uh, and you know, ramping up the uh, challenges and ramping up our production um, uh, per se. Uh, so my question, uh, for, firstly, uh, uh, for Rane MSK, 
ECC, uh, I think uh, we started providing from S19 uh, third quarter onwards. I think we provided more than 300 odd crores there uh, in terms of the warranty uh, provision. Uh, I think uh, uh, how much? What is the total revenue that NSK Rani NSK has recorded from the sales of these models that are now seeing these warranty claims over uh, over a period of uh, two to three years? What is the total revenue size? Sir? Because just just trying to understand how much. Uh, more can uh, the provisions uh, um, happen, if at all? What can be the worst case provision? So, uh, from that perspective, just trying to understand what is the total sales uh, for these models uh, from an MSK perspective. Uh, uh, Sham, uh we understood your question. We don't have the exact answer, uh, so I, but I'll, I'll just hazard a guess uh, that it will be the revenue of this warranty cost, as you said, is about 300 crores that has been provided for, uh, or, or this, uh, that includes the future provisions as well. The, uh, the revenue uh, is estimated to be around uh, 1,200 crores for till date, yeah. So about 1,200 crores. Okay, 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 understood. So of that, and this 100 crores, uh, uh, I mean, we, we also made some changes in in, in the product specifications in terms of uh, some uh, uh, to mitigate the issues that came. So this 100 crores is the sales that we did for these models prior to the changes we we did, sir. Okay, I, I during the period. That's what. So I will uh, get. You know, uh, we don't have the exact numbers, uh, Sham, so I, I know you're getting into a lot of details, so I'm not, I don't want to give a number that's wrong, so maybe we will review this and come back. Okay, okay, sure, sir. Um, uh, thanks for that, sir. And uh, from a CRW perspective, on the export side, uh, uh, very continuing a good performance there, sir. I mean, and the last nine months, we have uh, held the export revenues at an average 110 odd crores. Um, I thought the fourth quarter could have been slightly better, but uh, is it is it any is it because some chip shortages impacting the Korean customers per se? Um, so is it getting so uh, is it getting better as we go into the uh, second quarter onwards? How are you looking at that side? Right? Because we are also winning orders there. I mean, uh, this quarter also we have spoken about a new order win of 48 crores. Um, so how to look at the export uh, uh, revenue? Just hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Shank, uh, definitely the uh, the chip shortage has impacted the the revenue. Otherwise, we could have done more. And we are hopeful that you know from Q2 onwards, the situation will slightly improve, uh, and therefore the numbers will look better. But at the same time, you know it it's not near where the peak potential is. Uh, there is continued loss of uh, revenue because of the global chip shortage. Okay, okay. understood, understood, sir. And this new order win is also from the same Korean customer, sir, or or is it to? Uh, you know, we were also exporting to our uh, parent also. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this so yeah, so that, so while largely it is the Korean, but in the in both Q3 and Q4. We have also resumed, uh, we have also started supply to our partner uh, and many of which is also going to Europe. So that is steadily picking up in terms of top line. Understood, sir. Understood. Um, uh, best wishes for that, sir. One uh, last question on the uh, Rani Madra perspective. We have uh, also provided for the 62 and a half crores. Uh, empowerment provisions uh, to the uh, to RPDC. Uh, so just trying to understand because last year also we provided around 30 crores. We don't uh, from from our from from a management perspective we don't expect this business to revive because we have been continuously providing for the support that we have given during the year uh, at the end of the year as a prudent measure. Um, so uh, from your from the management perspective, uh, you, what how do you think of this business? Uh, you think it may not revive, and that is why we are providing uh, for the 
uh, from support we have given during the year so as i uh, told in my earlier uh, remarks uh, sham we will give you a full update in our july investor call uh, uh, on the on the way forward but obviously you know uh, the because of the the lack of increase in sales in that business over the last 2 3 years and coupled by the uh, impact of covid the top line you know further dropped during last year as you know from about 24 million to 17 million and uh, and therefore that has you know forced us to take these impairment as i also mentioned the situation is definitely improving in the us uh, market and uh, obviously from a top line standpoint it cannot be worse than that what we saw last year and in addition to that there are some new programs that were supposed to launch in q4 of last year that got delayed because of covid those are those are still there it's not that those programs have have gone away and those programs will also start coming back in the coming quarters so uh, we will share more with you during our july call on the future of that business thank you mr shriram may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions thank you the next question is from the line of sanjay shah from ks securities please go ahead Good morning, gentlemen. Thanks for opportunity. So my question was regarding uh, this NSK uh, our warranty issue. So uh, this has been long two years. Uh, we have been facing this issue. So now, what is the status? How how long you see that coming in, and what steps are we taking? And have we lost uh, this product uh, to our competitor, or still our uh, OE people are buying from uh, prefer buying from us the said product? I'll, I'll answer the second question first. The answer is uh, no. We have not lost any business to competitor. The product continues to be supplied, and there is still uh, life left uh, over the next few years. Uh, as far as the the first part of your question is concerned, you know, as I said, whatever this provision that we have made includes future complaints that will come. So the financial provisioning includes. uh you know uh, some more warranty problems that will come in the market but what comes in the market are all older cars you know so we have taken various counter measures in terms of changing the the a, a, some parts of the steering design and prop prop manufacturing process etc so those changes have have all been completed uh, some time ago so we are hopeful that in future you know as i said in my remarks all root causes have been identified and in future the problems won't be there but we will continue to have some claims coming that belong to the past and but which have been financially provided for my second question was regarding uh, uh, our rane madras uh, we have a market cap of around 550 crore and we are impairment of around 100 crore which is which we feel bit scary and we have many non core asset also lying with us uh, can cannot we utilize that to enhance the shareholder value or use in the capex so as of now there is no intent to uh, look at any monetization of land etc and as far as the future of this business uh, you know i think we have come coming through two extraordinary years on top of a turnaround situation that we were already struggling with so we will come back on uh, you know what the future direction is in in the month of july the last question was regarding how do you see the market ahead for our industry especially commercial vehicle for this year and next year so it is very difficult to to uh, predict uh, sanjay as you know um, you know we are uh, extremely volatile situation with uh, you know it's we've had significant lockdown in fact we had to even postpone this investor call because tamil nadu has been under very strict lockdown till last week and even now we are in lockdown but some small relaxation has taken place so there is a lot of uncertainty uh, but having said that we still believe that there is a demand in the market and the lockdown has you know not allowed the you know demand to be fulfilled and if you know the wave 3 etc doesn't happen and the country uh, opens up and vaccination 
also continues in a significant way, we believe the uh, the coming quarters uh, will will be better. What is the rationale behind believing that things should improve, especially in commercial vehicle? I want to talk because we need to understand: uh, uh, is that pent up demand you see coming in, or you see some economic activity which can push the sale or any? Uh, the combination. So, if your question is specific, okay, I was answering for all the vehicle segments, including passenger car, etc. In CV, uh, yeah, it, the rate of pickup uh, and demand will not be the same as what we see in uh, passenger car or, or two wheeler. Um, we have to wait and see how the economic activity, uh, you know, improves. I think obviously that's a key that's a key driver for sales for the commercial vehicle, especially all the infrastructure projects. Etc. So that will be one element, but there is also some demand uh, because, as you know, the uh, CV market has been it is a cyclical in the market, and after the peak of 18, 19, uh, the market has uh, you know come down significantly and it had bottomed out. So therefore, a combination of some cyclicality in you know uptick in the cyclicality of the uh, inherent uh, the business and uh, economic activity can uh, improve. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you. Thanks for answering my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manan Shah from Money B. Please go ahead. The current participant is on uh, get the call on hold. We'll move on to the next question. The next question is from the line of Ashwin Agarwal from Akash Ganga Investments. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. So we had a 90 crore order from next year for supply to General Motors for rack and pinion. Can you update how much we have supplied this year and this coming year, how much are we going to supply out of this? Uh, do we have data? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, in my uh, uh, Ashwin, uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, Rani Mandras, uh, the export growth in Q4 was 74% over last year. So obviously, as you are aware, the, that is driven largely by that order that you are referring to. Uh, that business has also been impacted by the chip shortage. So the current quarter, we are not hitting the projections the customer had given because they are facing chip shortage issues. Um, but it will pick up. So I'm, I'm trying to see if we have the exact numbers available. So this year we should be able to complete the value of the order and we were also in discussion for further orders from next year for some other customers. So any update on that? Correct. So uh, yes, so this order will continue. One, just hold on one second. Value order. 21.55. So, okay, so one information that I'm able to pull out is that uh, the next year business last year for the financial year 21 uh, was 55 crores, uh, largely driven by this program, which started somewhere in Q3 of last year. And as you said, that we still believe that that 90 crore order, the, the full impact will be seen in the coming year. And uh, the second part of your question, yes, we have one, some more business with that same customer and some of those programs are launching during this year. Yeah, that is a good news, sir. Yes, yeah. but of course, as I said, the um, that the steering order that we started while we were supposed to do 90 crores, there will be a uh, you know sh chip shortage impact. So there will be some reduction to what was planned earlier. It all depends on how the chip shortage uh, chip situation is in the coming quarters. So can but overall, you us, we'll see a growth on the export. Okay. Can you give us a number for ball joint exports? What was the value of ball joint exports for Rane Madras for la last year and what is the targets for this year? And we were also in discussion with Daimler and many other customers for export business. So anything has happened on that front? Uh, no, but uh, Daimler there is no uh, significant progress. Uh, but with next year, uh, I don't know, one second, we don't have how much? Okay. Yeah. So the ball joint export is around uh, 45 crores. 
um, and it will grow uh, to about 65 crores is the estimate. Uh, and what was the other question that you asked? No, we were in discussion. I said with Daimler and many other customers for a large export business of ball joints. So anything is happening there? No, nothing. Nothing significant is uh, nothing else significant has happened. We have one with another customer for ball joints uh, during uh, Q4. I think that is also we had shared. We are not naming the customer, but yes, we have one one contract. But it's not a very large order. Okay. So lastly. Coming to hydraulics, we had a target few years back to reach 150 crores led by CVs and tractors and we have made a few new products and we have launched in the market. So what has been the revenue from hydraulics in last year and what are the targets going forward? Yeah, so that 100 crore target remains. Uh, last year we did about 60 crores, 60, 64 crores. Okay. And uh, by when should we be able to reach and does this have any export potential? There is very little exports. It's largely domestic, uh, you know, farm tractor segment based. So hopefully the target should be achieved in the coming year. Thank you. This is the operator. Mr. Agarwal may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Sunil Kothari from Unique Investments. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Hope everyone is uh, healthy and safe for at uh, Rana Group. Uh, sir, my question is on uh, Rana Madras latest uh, standalone quarter results and uh, regarding the December quarterly numbers. So there is a wide variation in uh, operating EBITDA margin. I understand Romatil has uh, dented this one of the reasons. Other expense also has changed so much in terms of from December to March. So, at least broadly, if you can, uh, I mean, explain us how this margin, EBITDA margin, which normally we were able to achieve 10 plus 10, 11, 12 something, suddenly fallen to six, six and a half. How much time will it take to go back to those numbers? I mean, how much time it take to pass on this cost to customers? No, I mean, definitely the material cost has played a significant uh, role, uh, Sunil. And, uh, but, you know, we all, we will back to back get the, get the increases that we are very confident. But there is always a lag effect. So that is one. And second also, as you know, the, since the customer only compensates exactly to the amount of the increase, there is an inherent reduction in the margin. You, you, you understand what I'm saying, right? So if you have a material cost of 70 rupees on 100 rupees sale, and if, it, if, the, if 70 becomes 75, 75 by 105, the, or automatically, automatically there's a reduction in the margin. So that is also playing a role in addition to the absolute increase. The third thing is, uh, of course, you know, uh, we must also understand that uh, many of our employees uh, took a huge sacrifice uh, uh, during last year's Q1, Q2, and uh, most of Q3 by taking salary cuts and all that. So therefore, you know, the Q3, the volumes picked up uh, and many of the salary cuts, etc., were there. Of course, we reinstated uh, many of those things uh, somewhere in the middle of uh, Q3. So, you know, that impact is also fully seen in Q4. Uh, is there anything else? No. No, sir, my point basically, uh, luckily we are reaching at a really good uh, size in terms of quarter number 370, 390 crores. Uh, there should be benefits of operating leverage also. And if you look at our other company like RBL, we have increased margin in uh, this COVID year also. So is there anything inherently you feel uh, which is not allowing us to get a respectable margin at staying standalone RML? I mean, so, so as I've explained in the past, you know, if everything is fully, the inherent profitability of the uh, steering and linkage business it will only be in that, you know, 10% to 12% range. Everything is perfectly aligned. We could reach 12, 12.5%. Otherwise, you know, it will be in that 10, 11%. And of course, quarter to quarter, there could be differences based on, you know, various uh, things that, that hit us. 
so I mean, I'm not sure whether comparing with Rani breaklining would be uh, correct because that the nature of the businesses are different, and Rani breaklining has a significant aftermarket. Uh, uh, exposure compared to uh, Rani Madras. That's because again nature of the product, the brake lining, friction material, aftermarket opportunity is much more than steering. Yes, sir, I thought luckily we are getting now a very good uh, exports, uh, interesting exposure also in uh, Rani Madras right. because of small joints and uh, steering uh, joints and all. So I thought Correct. there should be improvement in margin. Sir, my last question is, uh, it's a really pain, it will be and it is painful for you also to give uh, so much time, you are very key people to improve this operational efficiency of uh, US subsidiaries. We are losing almost every year 50, 60 crore at PBT level. So have you analyzed, if, if suppose any day we take a decision, will this, uh, to stop this train, will it cost more than 100, 150 crore and is it worth taking decision? I'm not asking a very clear answer from you. I understand this. But it is a draining, uh, I think, our management ability. It, it must be uh, giving you stress also. So as an investor, we are uh, feeling so much pain due to this situation. I, I understand how much it will be troublesome for you. So any thoughts on this? Right. No, so, Sunil, we appreciate uh, your uh, your comments and sentiments. Uh, and I, I know you've, you've been a long-term investor. And yes, there is a lot of stress on the system. Uh, as I said, on top of a turnaround difficult situation we were already in, COVID uh, hurt us even more. Um, and therefore, in July, we will share the plans with you. But I also want to, I think I had shared, the, I think last, uh, last investor call, I think Enam had asked the question whether, you know, we were getting any support from the government of U.S. And the answer to that question is yes. We are getting support from the U.S. government, and that was not accounted for during last year. For you know, there were some accounting procedures and processes uh, that is involved with the U.S. government. So those uh, supports have not been recognized. But we will share more details during the July quarter. Fine, sir. My point is just that if as an investor we are ready to with you for this any hit, maybe 100, 150 crore for this. And we come out from this. So that is what I wanted to cover. Thanks a lot, sir. Wish you good luck. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Goel from Inam Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I have a few questions. First, on, on Rane TRW, if you can provide uh, revenue breakup between the steerings and the occupant safety for FI21 and FI20, it will be really helpful. Uh, and also, follow up question on occupant safety, if you can give a revenue breakup between domestic and exports. Uh, this is the first set of questions. One second, Manish. So, what is it steering? Hmm? Q3 and Q4. Q4, Q4. Uh, one seventy one seventy eight is the total steering uh, revenue in Q four. You wanted Q three and Q four, is it? No, sir. I wanted uh, for FI twenty and twenty one. Full year. Ah, okay. Full year. Yeah. Full year, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Full year. Oh, oh full year. Four eighty six and four fifty one. Sorry, four. FI twenty was four eighty six. Okay. And FI21 is 451. This is for and steering. So occupant, yeah. yeah. And occupant, occupant was 602 and 542. 542 in FI21. Correct. And out of which uh, 348 was the export. 348 crores exports in which year, sir? 21. And what was it in the previous year? 355. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Sir, uh, my second question is on Rane Engine Wall, sir. Uh, it's been, again, uh, uh, quite uh, challenging for us 
to see a turnaround over there. So if you can uh, lay out your thoughts as to how do we see going forward for next uh, couple of years on the turnaround of the Rana engine also. Yeah, so again, yes, that has also been a, a, a difficult uh, you know, problem for us over the last few years. But if you look at the uh, uh, operational performance of that business, there has been improvement you know, at, a, at an operational improvement, at an operating level. Uh, but unfortunately, the volume uh, has has not happened, and therefore, you know, the absorption of fixed costs is, is we are not able to fully absorb the fixed costs. So the operational turnaround plan is continuing, and there are some more initiatives that the company has uh, taken uh, in terms of you know improving the productivity of the machines. Uh, we are we are also doing some small VRS, etc. Uh, so I think a combination of that with the, with a growth in the top line will help. Now in the top line, in addition to the the domestic and export uh, growth, we are also targeting a lot of non automotive customers for engine valves. Uh, and during last year. We have uh, won several new uh, orders for these non-automotive valve uh, application, and some of those will also go into production in the coming year. So there is a conscious target by the management, you know, keeping of course the the long-term threat of uh, electric in mind, to also enhance the non-automotive portfolio for engine valves, and we are seeing some early results in that. Uh, so you know, ultimately. You know there is the, the top line growth uh, coupled with the with this continued operational improvement is what is going to help the the turnaround. Uh, you know it's unfortunate that again in Q1 we have been hit by the by the COVID. But if if the market grows by 12, 13 uh, percent, you know during this year the the, the performance of that business will improve. Okay, and sir, uh, sorry to come back on Rane NSK warranty provision. So you said the product basically we have rectified the issue. So the uh, the product supply for the rectified uh, uh, product has started uh, from uh, uh, from uh, Rane NSK. Yes, yes, yes. That has happened some time ago. And uh, so when you said. Uh, we we have taken provisions factoring uh, future uh, liabilities as well uh, potential future liabilities so why is it that we are still expecting some more provisions to come in for say probably next 6 months yeah, that is because you know see, typically what happens is once uh, the warranty issue can can come in a car that is 1 year old 2 year old or sometimes 3 year old etc right so and we have taken corrections all in the last year you know many changes have been made so even now it is possible that a, some, a customer who has purchased a car in 2019 right. could suddenly have a problem in the month of july or august and they will go to the maruti dealership and the steering will get changed so so ideally for such a long basically this problem uh, which would not have uh, uh, faced by a customer in early part can still come after 2 years or 3 years but sir yeah. uh, you would have made the provision accordingly right sir in the past as well so i'm just wondering so my point is that in next 6 months do we expect uh, the quantum of provision to be significant what we have seen in uh, quarter 4 or it would be provisions would be uh, probably a, a smaller uh, amount. That's so. As I said, uh, that's why I said, Manish, that you know we need another six months to answer that question. We believe all actions have been taken, and we have provided for the future. But however, we need six months more time to see the the effect of these changes in the market before we can conclude. You know. Uh, so that's why in my opening remarks, I said we need another six months. Thank you. Mr. Gul, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankaj Prasul, individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my question is on the uh, occupant safety side, especially on the airbag side. So what kind of revenue we are making right now in the airbag side and what kind of margin we are making? And since from 1st April 2021, 
the uh, second airbag is mandatory in all the passenger vehicles i i believe in the commercial vehicle also so post scrapage policy what kind of overall market you see in next 3 4 5 years and what kind of market share we have yeah the airbag sales for last year was about 200 and 200 yeah 240 crores all the airbag related business uh, yes and the legislation uh, for the the passenger airbag is also kicked in uh, but you know the impact of that will be not that significant because even before the legislation came in almost 90% of the cars that were being sold was being already sold with the passenger car uh, airbag you know while it was not mandatory the oems were selling it as a standard package and 90% of the customers were buying it that way so so that impact won't be significant and uh, just to clarify there is no regulation as yet for uh, airbags on commercial vehicle so the commercial vehicle airbag sales is almost neg- is almost zero so and it will and there is no immediate regulation that we are seeing also what kind of margin we are making there sir? and uh, do we believe that we, we are going to capture much more market share in india so we don't have the the uh, airbag margin alone overall it's about uh, about 7 seven to 8% ebitda okay and uh, where do we stand in terms of uh, market positioning number 1 number 2 number 3 for airbags yeah in terms of airbags yeah we will probably be number 3 today in the market okay that's largely because our presence in maruti uh, and hyundai is limited Yeah. so do we see in future we will uh, get into the yes 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 we have already got an entry for seat belts uh, in in maruti and we have also made some progress in hyundai okay now my next question on the rani engine one do we see that in within next year or uh, next 24 months we will make it to turn around that is the uh, intent uh, and but i also as i said earlier you know the market also plays a role uh, in terms of you know how quickly the the economy revives and the growth that we see in all the vehicle segments that will also play an important role okay and uh, can you throw some light on the uh, rane t for you uh, uh, business how it is how do you see future of those uh, verticals yeah so you know the the uh, I mean, obviously, it is an area where there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, the connected space, uh, trying to offer telematics and IoT-based solution, um, but at the same time, you know, COVID has had a, a significant impact on that business. And we also, you know, one particular customer contract that we had uh, came to an end, and that contract. Uh, i mean it was a it was not a renewable type of contract it was one contract but uh, that, that could have been renewed but they finally the customer decided that they won't do it so, uh, so as a result there has been a decrease in the top line both due to covid and this we are still uh, optimistic of growing this business but you know there is a lot of volatility in these kind of uh, connected a uh, telematics type of uh, the solution so it's difficult to you know give a long term prediction on how exactly with the growth of the business will be this little different from our our core manufacturing business but having said that we believe there is uh, opportunity and uh, you know in the next 12 months we'll have some clarity on the future direction of the business and you know how much capital we want to allocate towards this etc thank you The next question is from the line of Naresh Ranka, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Uh, so my question uh, is regard to Rame NSK steering. So we actually had a warranty provision of almost 351 crores from FY19. 
Sir, uh, last time actually there was a mention that uh, there have been discussion for the insurance claim. So, are we eligible for uh, claiming insurance for this warranty, sir? Uh, Rane NSK? So, you know, it is a very complex uh, subject and it is still under discussion with, uh, you know, various agencies. So, I'm not able to comment at this time uh, on on what is possible or what is not possible. Okay. So, uh, uh, can you also uh, see, because it's been 351 crores provision, at least can you give a figure like how many vehicles we would have done the replacement on? How many, maybe some 1 lakh, 1.5 lakh vehicles we would have done the replacement, sir, the, the EBS? Yeah, yeah. I, I, if, if, incidentally, my understanding is the, the provision amount is 320 crores, not... Uh, Okay, 320 so, crores. crores. Yeah, so this provision will be approximately around 165,000 units. 165,000. So, uh, based on your estimate, like what will be the percentage of uh, fall for which the replacement would have been done, sir? I mean, uh, the percentage of the fault, you know, there will be some estimate, right? The, this many vehicles could have been at fault. And or is it like hundred percent provided for any figure on that, sir? Yeah. So we difficult to give an exact number, but it will be in the low single digits, you know, four uh, percent uh, in that range. Okay. No, so, uh, based on the fault, I mean, where you are expecting fault on that percentage, sir? Like we are expecting two lakh vehicles fault, and we have provided one lakh sixty five thousand, something no, like I, that. I, I, no, no, as I told you, the, the 320 crores that have been provided for includes future liabilities. And as okay. I had answered to, to Manish earlier, as okay. of now, this is the total amount. So this is at okay. 160,000. So today, it's not as though 160,000 vehicles have been replaced. The provision okay. is for 160,000 vehicles. Now, whether this will remain at 160 permanently or not, I think only in about six months' time, the clarity will emerge. Oh, okay, okay. So, but 160,000, we have not done the replacement. We have only provided one. Okay. Correct. Okay. Uh, sir, one more uh, question regarding uh, to the uh, Rane Light Metal Casting USA. So, I know, I mean, there's a lot of pain. Uh, I guess we've at least made a cash loss of 100, 110 crores. So, what is the outlook, sir? Yeah, I'm sure you answered to a lot of people that in, by July you'll be able to give us a uh, clear indication. Yeah. So, so, but what will be the future plan for these subsidiaries, sir? Because it's, uh, it's a big stress to the standalone business of Rane Madras. I'm sure you would have taken a call, and I, I guess by July you'll be giving us, right? The, okay. So, yeah, as I said, we'll share more details in July. Okay, okay, no problem, sir. So, apart from that, yes, sir, we are uh, happy because I'm also, we are also the same automobile business. We know the brand Rane and is one of the uh, well-known brands, and wishing you all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajkumar V, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the, the first question is uh, on the Rani Metra's uh, operating margin. Uh, I was going to the Crescent, the, the current the credit rating report which Crescent has issued for RML. So they are talking about uh, the margin suppression or margin uh, pressure not only due to the overseas subsidy. They are also talking about uh, the domestic die-casting division is also not performing well for animators and that is also putting pressure on the margins. So if you could please give color uh, that this is... Not only the raw metal issue, and, the not, and this is also creating, a, I mean, you know, pressure on the margins for RML. Is that a correct statement? Yeah. So uh, definitely, I mean, as uh, you know, we have been communicating in multiple investor calls in the past two years. The the the, the die casting business of RML India, the, uh, you know, the two plants that we have in Hyderabad, have been going through a very difficult time. Uh, because we made a large investment in 2016-17 and uh, based on some confirmed orders that we received on an export customer and finally we ended up that export customer the volume turned out to be you know something like 20 percent of what they forecast so therefore there was a significant impact and we could not immediately 
uh, utilize that capacity for other customers. So it has taken us about three years, but as I have mentioned in the past calls, we believe that the worst is behind us for that business because a lot of new business has been booked in the last 12 to 15 months and we are, the sales is steadily improving uh, from Q4 of uh, uh, last financial year. And of course, Q1 of this year, there is again a COVID impact, but the, all the orders are in place and we think that going forward, we will see margin improvement. And what was the uh, number for the last quarter, uh, sir? Do you have like a, was it a positive break-even number or uh, just still a loss uh, for Q4? The Q4 of... Uh, the current year, sir, 2021. Is it correct? What is this then? That one? No, no, what is 380 and 398? Oh, that's standalone. Oh, sorry. So it's a, uh, it's yeah. So Q3 was about uh, 42 crores, and Q4 was about 32 crores. So, sorry, sir. This is the bottom line number you are reading out, as a no, no, top line, top line, top line. And how about the bottom line, sir? Uh, so the margin in Q3 was about eight and a half percent. In Q4 was about 14 percent. Okay, so it is actually turned around then. It is not no longer a drag on the margins of RMN, right? Yeah, that's what as I said. Going for, I think the worst is behind us for that business. And and the reason why Crystal is highlighting this in your this is a this is a current report. So this is for May 21 they have highlighted. So uh, did they not have this information at the time? If you look at last year's full year performance. Uh, definitely, they, you know, that has impacted the RML negatively. So that is why Crystal must have made that observation. Okay. Sir, uh, with this division turning around, so you, we can expect your uh, operating margins to move to 12 to 13 percent, right? Given the raw material will be a path to at some stage you will catch up uh, on the price increase. Uh, so for, you are asking for the die casting business? No, no, overall for RML. No, oh, I, I said overall. Uh, I mean, it's very difficult to give a number, but as I said, the inherent, you know, it, it can be anywhere in that 10 to 12 percent band. Yeah. So, the, sir, the reason is, see, if you see the guys like Mahindra CIA and all, they are already doing 12 to 13 and they have aspirations to do 15. So, uh, you know, I was just wondering with uh, Rani kind of a pedigree, you, I mean, you know, you should be ahead of uh, those people. So, th that is the reason I'm asking this question. I understand. Sir, uh, the, the second question is uh, on the uh, Rani NSK, given the significant uh, provisioning, so are there uh, any funding requirements, will uh, Rani be requested to fund further? And, and also this uh, narrative which you currently said you would wait for two quarter performance to see, you know, to wait for NSK to stabilize. So this narrative is kind of new now because of the, the past uh, conference calls you have been saying that this warranty provision is a thing of the past. It will not impact, uh, you know, the current performances. So, and if you could please, uh, you know, highlight why you are making this new narrative now. So, as uh, I think, yes, you are right that in the past we thought that the problem will be contained to a smaller number, but it turned out to be bigger than what anyone had anticipated. See, we go largely by the guidance given by the NSK experts. They do an estimation uh, based on the, uh, uh, the the kind the number of defects that are coming in the market, etc. So, you know, therefore, there was an unanticipated, uh, you know, the or how do I say the the analysis that was done did not comprehensively cover the full problem. But now we believe we have done that. Okay. Sir, so, so lastly, I I just wanted to know: is there a way you could consolidate all your companies under one umbrella? Uh, and have a better valuation and also reduce the volatility of your stocks because many mutual funds will not even look at uh, you know companies which below 1000 crore market cap given that we have multitude companies below 1000 market cap uh, you know it would be better uh, you know Rani to look at uh, merging all of them under one umbrella and, uh, and have a better valuation and you know you see uh, guys of you know lesser uh, experience in the market coming with you know higher valuation and it's very Starting to see Rani with almost 10 decades of history, you know, having a lower valuation in the market. 
your point is noted. I, I see there are some companies that are joint ventures, uh, so they will always remain standalone entities. But of course, you know, merging everything and having the joint ventures also underneath that is theoretically a possibility. We keep discussing this internally. I'm sure at the appropriate time we will come back. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last question from the line of Sham Shaker from iThought Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, sorry to be repeating what a lot of people have said, but uh, though you have provided 320 crores on NSK and uh, the provisions are accelerating, I am not sure how you are saying that uh, you feel that you have provided for the worst. Somehow that is not convincing because the provisions are accelerating and you are still saying you have provided for the worst. It would help if you actually say how much of warranties you have paid out? You have actually provided for 320 crores, but can you give a number how much has been paid out till now? So that we know what is the number that you have in cushion or in, in kind of a reserve to pay out into the future. I think the two numbers will give a lot more clarity than all the questions that we have been hearing uh, on this issue. Yeah, so as of March, about 215 crores has been paid out. Okay. And how do you say that uh, you have provided for the worst? As, as I said, you know, based on NSK experts, they have given an estimation, and uh, we uh, we go by that estimation. As you know, this is a 51% NSK-owned company, and their experts provide us an estimation, and we go by that. So, can we emphatically say that the worst is over? I think I repeat it. I think six months from now, we can be in a better position to answer. We believe we have taken all the actions to put this problem to rest. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So, you know, we, uh, we appreciate all the comments. You know, obviously, this Q4 has been a very difficult one for us. While uh, I think as someone mentioned, you know, at an operations level, while we saw improvements on, on many fronts, unfortunately, we have had, you know, some significant setbacks from, a, uh, you know, in terms of uh, booking certain things in the, uh, in the accounts, like the warranty provision, the impairment of the U.S. business, yeah, I think the small impairment we had to take in Drani Holdings at, uh, for the T4U investment. I think, you know, it's a combination of, uh, certain, you know, things that have impacted those business negatively and COVID, etc. So we decided that we will take some of these hard decisions. It's been a difficult uh, quarter for us, uh, but I'm hopeful that, you know, with with the market improving and uh, some of these uh, provisions that have been made, uh, hopefully the future will look better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Rani Group, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.